Interested in nailing that iconic tone? Or maybe even something a little more wild like this. Well, in this video, I'll be revealing what I believe are the three must-have effect pedals for any electric guitarist that will effectively help you achieve pretty much 70 to 90% of the tones of any songs you want to play. And I'll be using a few iconic tunes and riffs to demonstrate the possibilities of just these three pedals that I've selected. There's thousands of effect pedal models out there, so obviously it can get a little bit confusing for someone starting out, but Really, instead of considering each effect pedal model individually, we should really group effects into a few main categories that any model can sort of slot into. So to start off, we'll assume that you have an electric guitar and we're just going to use a basic clean amp. I've got a Vox AC30 behind me. As you can hear, it's just a plain guitar tone with nothing special. But almost any clean amp will do. The effects pedals will really be doing the heavy lifting and adding the magic in these examples. So essential effect number one is reverb. And with this effect alone, we're going to recreate John Mayer's Slow Dancing in a Burning Room and Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah. Reverb is something you hear every day and it happens when sound reflects off surfaces in a room. So think about the last time you were in a big hall or a church. It's that big room sound reflection that you'd experience in that environment. In contrast, if you were to walk into your clothes wardrobe and sing your favorite song, there's zero sound reflection and ambience. It's what you'd call a dry sound. So with that in mind, reverb can add a real sense of space and set the mood for your guitar tone. I've got a reverb pedal here from the Fender Hammer Tone series, which is an excellent range of FX pedals for beginners, but most reverb pedals will help you achieve something similar. So let's look at Slow Dancing in a Burning Room by John Mayer. Now, to get as close as possible to this tone, first off, on your electric guitar, you'll ideally want to have a Strat with single coils, and you'll want to use the neck middle pickup, otherwise known as position four. So position one's all the way down, position two, three, and then four. So that's a combination of the neck and middle pickup. If you are using a guitar with humbuckers, well, then you could just use the neck pickup as an alternative. Other than that, roll your tone up to 10 and then your volume up at 8 to 10 on your guitar and we're good to go. First off, let's listen to this riff with no reverb and then I'll activate the pedal so you can hear the difference that reverb can make. So as you can hear, it added an ambience to that riff that the dry sound just can't compete with. Now, what happens if we really turn up the reverb? Well, let's use Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah cover as an example. On this particular pedal, we've got a time control which adjusts how long we want our reverb to last and dwell for, and also a level control which adjusts how prominent we want that reverb to be in the mix. So if we crank those up, we'll really be in flavor country in terms of ambience. So let's hear Hallelujah with and without the reverb.
So that's reverb, definitely a must have in your electric guitar arsenal, especially if you like playing clean tones. Now do be careful not to overdo it with reverb though. It is quite easy for beginners to overdo it and then you end up sounding like you're underwater with zero clarity. So just like adding chili to your meal, you don't want to overdo it. And that actually applies to all the effects that I mentioned in this video. Okay, let's move on to essential effect number two, which is overdrive slash distortion. Now overdrive and distortion are effectively cut from the same cloth. Their objective is to make your tone bigger, gnarlier and heavier so you can play your favorite rock, blues and punk tunes. I like to visualize overdrive, distortion and metal pedals on a spectrum of grittiness to your tone. And there is definitely a bit of overlap between them too. At the lower end, overdrive will provide you with light to medium levels of grit that can cover most rock genres. Distortion covers the mid and high spectrum for heavier music, and then you have metal distortion pedals that are super high gain and are super harsh. Personally, if I had to pick one, I'd go with Overdrive, since you can get a warm bluesy sound, but you can also crank it up to something heavier for classic rock. It really just depends on what genre you're going to play though. So let's listen to a couple of riffs with and without our Overdrive. The Overdrive I have here is again from the Fender Hammer Tone series. So finally, essential effect number three is delay, which is a time-based effect that basically takes what you play and repeats it again and again for a set amount of time. So for example, I'll play one note now and you'll hear how the delay repeats it again and again. Now the most important parameters for any delay are the feedback, which dictates how long you want the signal to keep repeating on and on. The time, sometimes just labeled as delay, which is the space in between the repetitions. And then finally, the level, which is how loud you want the repetitions to be. Delay is a super cool effect that is mostly used in a subtle manner, but you can get some pretty interesting sounds by utilizing this effect. I've got the delay here from the Fender Hammer Tone series again. So let's listen to three pretty iconic delay riffs and you'll actually be amazed by how different they sound with the delay pedal off. So those are the three main effects that I believe are the most important for any electric guitar player. Reverb, overdrive slash distortion and delay. And of course you can mix these effects together to really have a lot of fun and create endless tone possibilities. Let's take a listen to a few examples where I'm using all three together in combination to create some awesome sounds and searing lead tones.
Finally, I just want to note that if you do use these three effects, then the order in which they are placed in the signal chain is actually quite important. Generally, if we're working with these three effect types and just a clean amp channel, you'll want to go out of your guitar and into the overdrive slash distortion pedals first, and then into the delay and finally the reverb. Now time-based effects like reverb and delay are always generally at the end of the chain. And that's because you don't want a situation where the reverb and the delay artifacts and trails are then run into an overdrive. That will result in a super messy and muddy sound. The better option is to have an overdriven signal ready to go without any of those trails or artifacts. And then that goes into the delay or reverb resulting in a much cleaner sound. And also if you are using a looper pedal, whack that at the very end of your signal chain. With music though, there are no hard and fast rules, just suggestions. So of course, if you wanna experiment, then by all means, go for it. Now, obviously I haven't covered any modulation pedals like chorus and tremolo or dynamic based pedals like compression in this video as I wanted to keep things fairly simple, but also just to highlight the most important three in my eyes. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hopefully you now have a little bit more clarity on the main effect types that really matter with electric guitar. There are of course other factors that come into play when it comes to your tone, like the pickups you use and the type of guitar that you use. But the three effects that I've outlined in this video are the best bang for your buck and will get you most of the sounds that you desire. I'll leave a link in the description below to all the pedals and the gear that I've used in this video. If you have any questions, then let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.